Good morning, everyone. This is day six of the 30 Day Profit Challenge. I'm your host, Blair Dijon, and welcome to this Coffee with Blair webinar series. Thanks for being here. I know it's a Saturday. I know it's early, 7.30, but you made it, and that's awesome to see. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate you being here today. And uh, today we're going to get into the average product margin. It's sort of the last step in this product margin tree that we were working ourselves through for the last couple of days. And so what I'm going to show you today is going back to a bit of a lesson we had in day two, where we talked a bit about how gross margin versus gross profit can impact your bottom line for your business. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to break that down for basically an individual product. And so that from the next lesson, we'll pull, tie it all together so that you can understand the product margin formula all the way from top to bottom. So let's dive into it. Let's start the screen share here and we'll get rolling. All right. Whoops. Hold on a second here. Little technical difficulties. Let's share that. And let's get rolling. Oops, we've got the wrong screen. Hold on a second here, folks. We'll just get the right screen going here for you. And there we go. All right. So average product margin is what we're going to talk about today. So as you recall from the last couple of days, we've been making our way through this product margin tree. So on the right hand side of your screen as well, remember that's the order margin that we're going to get into next week. But how the product margin tree works, remember, is you've got your sales revenue breaks down to your average order value and orders. From there, you've got your average product revenue or average unit revenue, it's sometimes called, which we talked about in the recording I sent you earlier. You've got units per order and units sold on that level. Then from where there, you've got your cost of goods sold and your product margin. So we're going to gravitate a little bit more towards the bottom left-hand corner. But just as a refresher, so you remember what average order value means. Average order value, again, is taking your sales revenue over your orders. So in this scenario, you took your million dollars of revenue divided by your 4,000 orders to get your 250 average order value. Then what you've got is units per order. And this is a, is a recording that I sent you from yesterday. But basically what the units per order is, is basically think of it on the two ways to calculate it. On your far right hand side, what you can do is you can take your quantity divided by your orders to get your units per order. So if you go 10,000 divided by 4,000, that's going to give you 2.5. The other way to look at it is your average order value. And so where your average order value works is if you take your average order value divided by your average unit revenue or average product revenue, you're gonna line at the same number. And so in yesterday's lesson, I showcased how if you increase that units per order number, you're gonna actually grow more order value in terms of your average order value as more as more sales at the top line. What that's also gonna do is on the far side, it's gonna increase your quantity, which is then gonna drive units to the bottom line for your product margin. So today what we're gonna talk a bit about is your average product margin. And so if you recall from our previous lesson in day two, we talked about gross margin or gross profit. And it's a very similar calculation here when we're talking about average product margin. What we're talking a bit about is, again, I, I use the term interchangeably, but if you take your average unit revenue, so think about the average price that you sold the product at, take away your cost of goods sold, which is what you pay to generate those products or manufacture those products, what you're left over with at the bottom is your average product margin. And so in this scenario, what we're talking about is, let's say you sold a product for $100, and then it costed you $25 to produce that product or to generate or manufacture that product. And then at the bottom, so if you take 100 minus 25, you're gonna be left with $75 is average product margin. So let's go through a few scenarios here to see, well, how does that impact? How can I grow the margin? And we're gonna look at two different scenarios here of how you can grow your product margin. The first scenario we're gonna look at, and we talked a bit about this the other day, is in light of obviously the COVID sort of scenario, this may or may not be what you want to do at this time. But from time to time, as we know, most 
people at some point are going to have to raise prices. It's just the cost of doing business, cost of living goes up. And so at some point you may have to increase your prices. And so let's take a look at how when you increase your price, what that does to the bottom line of your average product margin. And so in this scenario, let's take, for example, you increased your average unit revenue by 10%. So what that would do is then drive your average unit revenue up to $110. But let's say, for example, you keep your cost of goods sold at $25 to keep that constant. What you're going to be left over with is you're going to basically increase your average product margin by 13%. Or if we take 110 minus 25, you're left over with $85. And so in this scenario, what you're doing is you're taking, raising top line, but you're also increasing bottom line. See how that works? And so in the next scenario, what we're gonna look at now is if you do the opposite, if you decreased your cost of your cost of goods sold by $25, if you decrease that, what's that gonna to do to your margin? So let's take the same percentages. And again, I'm using these 10% as sort of relative, hopefully to make the math simple for you. That could be 5%, it could be 20%, it could be 25%. Whatever those numbers are for you, for your business, just keep in mind that these are just meant to be placeholder examples for you. So let's take, for example, cost of goods sold at 25 bucks. If we take away 10% of that, you're gonna be left with 22.50 as your cost of goods sold. And so what will happen then is if you hold your average unit revenue constant at the top $100, take away 22.50, you now see that you've increased your project product margin by 3% overall by going from 75 down up to 77.50. And so by reducing the cost of goods sold, you're actually increasing your average product margin. And that makes sense. You know, you're widening that gap between your top line and your bottom line of revenue. So now let's look at what the two look like combined. Let's take, for example, now we increase our cost and we decrease, sorry, we decrease our cost, correction, and we increase our price. What's gonna happen there? So let's use those same 10% numbers. So if we increase our average unit revenue by 10%, Again, your price goes up to 110. Then if we decrease our cost of goods by 10%, that's gonna decrease the cost of goods down to 2250. So those two combined, if you can do the math, if you added it up from the previous two scenarios, it's gonna drop it all the way down to 8750 or drop it up, sorry, increase it to average product margin. And also that's an increase of 17%. So as you can see in this example, by increasing both the top line and increasing the bottom line on your individual product margin, that's actually gonna grow your overall product margin, not just for your business, but also for the rest of the other math in the formula. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm, not, I'm gonna pause it there. I'm not gonna go through the whole math today because I don't wanna uh, you know, make it too overwhelming, but tomorrow's lesson, what we'll do is we'll take all of these three sort of last few days where we looked at the average order value, you know, where we talked a bit about how if you increase your average order value or you increase the units per sold, or you increase the actual orders, or in this scenario, maybe increase your price or decrease cost to get sold. There's a lot of things in there sort of thing to kind of add up, so to speak. And if you're, if you're good at math like me, great. You can probably follow along, but maybe you need just a little bit more help or a little bit of an extra lesson. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow is you ha also, if you haven't had a chance to look through the units per order lesson, that's a pretty key one to understand as well, how increasing the amount of units to your order is also going to increase the average order value for you as well as your quantity of units sold to then increase your bottom line. So tomorrow's lesson what we'll do is we'll tie it all together. We'll bring it together in what we call the product margin formula and really what it is, is it's a representation of the entire product tree all the steps down. We'll kind of walk through them end to end and see how all these different scenarios play back and we'll start with the average product revenue product margin sorry and work our way back up the tree okay. Because at the end of the day, if you think about a tree and visualizing it, it starts with the roots at the bottom that help you grow, create branches, and create leaves. And so hopefully this metaphor has been easy for you to understand what we're talking about when we're talking about product margin. And then from there, as of tom as also tomorrow, because it's a bit of a holiday, again, like yesterday's lesson, I am going to record the session. So I've actually canceled tomorrow's webinar, so you don't have to show up necessarily. So appreciate you again for showing up today. But in tomorrow's lesson, what we'll do is I will record it for you like I did yesterday's and I will send it to you in an email so that you can have that lesson to record and so you can enjoy the time off with your family or your friends. So with that, that's today's lessons. Thanks again for watching. And again, I ask you to be present today, connect with others, and if you get a chance, try to make an impact in someone else's life. So thanks for the lesson today. And I'm gonna pause the recording now and I'll stop it if, so that if there's any questions or if there's any uh, things that people want to talk about today, 
we can take it from there. So it's a quiet bunch today. I get it. It's been a weekend, long weekend, so to speak, right? And maybe you haven't had a chance to watch the units per order lesson. But what I encourage you to do is if you get a chance, go watch units per order. Then when this one comes through, watch this one over again. And then you'll be able to make sense and tales of the whole product margin formula. And then what I'm also going to work on today and tomorrow is have that worksheet ready for you. So that when we go through it, when you go through the recording tomorrow, you'll be able to kind of step through and plug in your own numbers. So you'll be able to kind of come up with your own formula around what your product margin formula looks like for your business. Okay. So with that, I'll give it 30 seconds for any questions. But if not, I will let you go. Thanks for tuning in on a Saturday morning. Again, I uh, appreciate you being here. And we will talk to you on Monday. Have a great rest of your long weekend. Thank you.